Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. So the Federal Reserve increased interest rates by 75 basis points or three quarters of 1% on Wednesday. The markets are tumbling again. There is so much doom and gloom out there. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the expectations, the reality of the situation going forward. I'm gonna talk about the stock market, the housing market, the crypto market, interest rates, and just overall personal finances and help you try to make some solid decisions for yourself going forward. All right, let's get to it. So real quick, come enroll in the School of Personal Finance. For a limited time, it is only $97 for lifetime access. Come take some of our courses, master your family's finances in 30 days, create your own financial plan, start on your journey of becoming great with money. Over the summer, I'm gonna be offering live classes where you can come and join me and ask questions. I'm going to have live office hours as well where you can come in and ask me anything. I have quizzes in there, different calculators and resources. My only goal is to grow a community of financial education and helping people create their own financial plan and become great with their personal finances. So come and join me over there. So now I'm going to start with the stock market and go through my thoughts and opinions on all different aspects of the economy. Just remember, none of this is financial advice. This is just for educational purposes only. So with the stock market, we're already down over 20%. We are in a bear market and it is ugly. It is brutal out there and many are predicting that it is just going to get worse and it very well might. So what do you do at this point? So I always talk about time horizon and where you are at your stage of life. So hopefully you do not have any money invested in the stock market that you need in the next one to four years or so hopefully for most of you out there you are investing for the long term you have a long-term time horizon and if that is the case then you just have to look at this like it is a gift like it is okay that these values are coming back down because now what you could do is you could just continue to accumulate shares over the next 10 years or so and you will be ready you will be armed when we have that next boom cycle where the economy starts growing again at a double digit clip but it might take a while so your expectations have to be that it is going to be a slow downward move in this market and that we're not going to just jump right back like we did in march of 2000 it's just not going to be that way this time it is a different environment and it might get much uglier before it gets better now we are back to december 2020 levels in the stock market and some of the stocks have been killed even past that point a lot of the high growth names have just been completely obliterated but basically all the gains from 2021 they have disappeared so it's unfortunate and it sucks when you see your account balance going down but hopefully this has zero impact on your life you're not using this money now so it really doesn't matter it's not going to impact your day-to-day -day. now i still think the best way to invest in the market is using broad-based index funds and being very well diversified and not trying to place specific bets on sectors as we can see specific sectors have gotten completely annihilated during this and you don't want to be too heavy in any of them so just investing in a broad-based index fund it has stood the test of time and i don't think that is going to change going forward so to just wrap up my thoughts on the stock market i think it's going to get ugly for a little while i think it's going to be very volatile i think it's going to take a long time before we make new highs so the best thing to do is really just stick to the plan dollar cost average don't make any big bets don't make any big moves and you have to lower your expectations for rates of returns all right so now let's shift to the housing market so now this is a tough one mortgage rates we're up at like six percent on the 30-year fixed rate mortgage where just back in the beginning of the year it was a little bit over three percent so that is painful if you're looking to buy a house right now and the prices really have not come down there is still very low inventory out there even though that seems like it's starting to change a little bit there is still much more demand than there is supply for homes in this country so i don't think that the housing market is going to crash even though people are calling for that i do see a softening in the housing market i don't think there are going to be bidding wars on houses going forward but homes are still selling they're not sitting on the market for extended periods of time but it just seems like activity is dropping off a cliff so people are not listing homes people are not buying homes it just seems like everybody's in this holding pattern to see what happens with interest rates but if you're a first-time home buyer i really do think the best thing to do is to wait a little bit and give it a little bit of time to see how it all plays out continue saving cash and building up that cash for down payments so you will be able to buy a house comfortably and be able to afford a payment now if mortgage rates really do continue to climb and we start seeing seven percent eight percent mortgages then i don't think that there's any choice but for home prices to come down i think people are going to have to lower their home values if they want to try to sell them from an investor's 
point of view. I did sell a couple of my rental properties over this past year, ones that caused me headaches that I just felt like it was a good time for me to cash out and raise some cash by doing that. But you know, the rents are going up also. So from an investing standpoint, the numbers could still make sense, but it really does depend. Now with the job market, I mean, the job market is very strong right now. Unemployment is below 4%. These are very low numbers, but I do think that the Federal Reserve is going to have to make the choice where they're going to say, listen, if we want to fight inflation, if we want to nip inflation in the bud, which is their number one priority, that they are going to be willing to sacrifice jobs in this country that they're going to be willing to put us into a recession and say listen we got to work our way out of this and get through it but our number one priority is going to be to bring inflation down so if you have a job where you feel like maybe you don't have complete security or you're at risk then you have to make sure you're taking the correct measures to put yourself on very solid financial footing because these companies as the cost of capital goes up as the economy starts to shrink there might be more and more layoffs you're hearing about it already so you have to make sure that you're taking care of you and that you're making smart decisions with your finances with your money the cash reserves build up those cash reserves right now because i just don't feel great about the job market i feel like layoffs are coming as these companies start to contract as the economy is contracting and demand starts to go down that's what happens in these cycles the unemployment rate it starts to go up and i don't i don't think the fed is going to step in to save that because they're going to have to deal with inflation all right so let's touch on crypto and also on gold so now i talk about all the time between those two asset classes having about five percent of your portfolio invested in those and i'm still a believer in that so even though with crypto, with Bitcoin, I mean, it is down almost 70% off the highs. And when I talk about crypto, I am always really just talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum. I don't invest in any of the other altcoins or any of that staking or all the craziness that's going on with that. I never advocate that. I don't think that you should invest in that either. But as far as Bitcoin, I am a believer and I am still dollar cost averaging. So when I look at my portfolio and I want to rebalance, these are times when I would be adding a little bit to my Bitcoin to get it back to my percentage that I want. For me, maybe it's two and a half percent of my overall portfolio. And since it's gotten clobbered so badly, that is a time that I add to it to bring it back up to that two and a half percent amount in my portfolio. But you have to be looking at that money as it could disappear, right? It could go to zero and it wouldn't shock the hell out of me if it did go to zero, but I am betting that it will go higher at some point in the future. But you have to look at that money as a very, very high risk piece of your portfolio. So now gold, on the other hand, it really just hasn't done much at all, um, which I guess is a good thing when the markets are getting killed, but it hasn't acted as the inflation hedge that many believe that it would. So with inflation, you know, basically at 40 year highs, gold has just not had that really push higher. Now, when people are taking risk off of everything, when you see, you know, complete sell offs of all assets, gold is kind of getting lumped in there. It's just not being that inflation hedge that a lot of people expected that it would. So the price here around 1825, I am basically just holding on to my gold. I'm not really adding to it too much right now. I'm definitely not selling it. I want it to continue to remain about two and a half percent of my overall portfolio. But maybe it will catch up. Maybe if the Fed, if the Fed flinches and they change course or they say, you know, what, we're going to take our foot off the gas because we're going into a recession and things are getting very ugly. So we're not going to raise rates anymore. I think you will see both Bitcoin and gold explode higher. But I don't think the Fed is going to do that, at least not yet. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how bad the economy actually gets. So I am still keeping my Bitcoin and my gold in case that does happen. But you know, so far, it's not like they've been a, a great hedge for the stock market dropping 25 to 30 percent over the last six months. All right, so now let me share some tips with you, some things that I think you should be proactively doing during these crazy economic times. So the first one is to look at your budget again. Look at how much money you are spending every month, because I promise you the price has gone up since the last time you were looking at things. So look at your fixed costs. So like your mortgage or your rent, your cell phone bill, your car payments, your student loans, list out all of those fixed costs. Then list out all of your variable costs. So your groceries, your gas, things that might change on the monthly basis. Now I actually have a budget template that I use that I give to all my clients that I work with. And I'm gonna put it on my website on school 
solopersonalfinance.com right on the homepage. You could go ahead, enter your email address in there, and I will email it to you. It is just an Excel spreadsheet. It will also work in Google Sheets or in Numbers as well. So go download that template, put in all your projected costs, and then on a monthly basis, track how much you're actually spending compared to what you projected for the month. And then my second tip is to run projections, to look at the next two years of your life and how much you think life will cost you, how much you think you could save every month, what that looks like, and to tighten up, to look at where you could save money. So like right now is a great time to look through your monthly subscriptions, what you're paying for that maybe you're not really using that much, places where you could cut back a little bit just to get yourself back to what you were spending you know, eight months ago. Because the cost of everything that we are using, even though they say that the CPI is only up 8.6% or whatever the number is, my cost of living, it's gone up much more than that, right? Between gas and groceries and eating out or whatever the case may be, stuff for my kids, all the costs, they are insanely higher. I walk out of stores being like, how the hell did that just happen? Like it pisses me off to the point that I'm starting to substitute, right? We're eating a lot more uh, chicken legs over here rather than steak. It is time to start bringing down the cost of living because it's insane and I'm starting to get a little fed up with it. So I'm looking for ways to save money because I just don't want to be spending at these crazy rates. You have to start questioning, is it worth it or not? So start digging through your stuff, making those decisions because you don't want to be in a situation where you have to go into credit card debt or you have to pull from your emergency fund just to be able to keep up the cost of living to what you were used to you know, a year ago or eight months ago or whatever. The third tip is no matter what, Keep investing in your retirement accounts. Don't cut those out. Don't say things are tight. I have to look for ways to save. I'm going to reduce my contributions or I'm going to stop contributing to my 401k or my IRAs. These are the years that you want to make sure that you're doing that, that you almost want to juice them up because prices are 30% less, 25% less than they were just six months ago. So by dollar cost averaging in, it is a great way to invest for your long-term future. So don't give up on those. Find other ways to cut before you start pulling the trigger and stopping your contributions for your future. The fourth tip is to rebalance, right? I mentioned earlier how Bitcoin is down basically 70% and it's now a smaller percentage of my overall portfolio than I want it to be, so that will force me to go in and buy a little bit, to add a little bit. I mean, maybe it will go down much more from here and I'll add a little bit more as well. And I'm prepared for that and I'm willing to lose money in that. But for your overall portfolio, see, you know, are you out of whack all of a sudden, right? Has your stock portfolio or the percentages not what is right for you where you need to go in and you need to sell some things and buy some things to get it back into that percentage that is right for you. So rebalancing during these volatile markets, it makes a lot of sense. Maybe every six months or you could have a trigger of a certain percentage point where you want to do it, but just don't ignore it. Don't never rebalance. That was a double negative there, right? So you want to rebalance. It's something that you want to do, even if it's on an annual basis. You want to have some process in place where you go in and you look at it and you rebalance your portfolio. And then my fifth tip, and you know, you already know this if you listen to me, don't make any drastic moves. Now is not the time to panic sell and say, you know what, I don't want this pain. I know the markets are going lower, so I'm going to get out now and then I'll buy back in at a lower time. It's just impossible to time it like that. And with bear markets, when markets are going down, sometimes they have a rally that just rips your face off. You know, it's just like a 10% rally in two days and you don't want to miss out on those. So you don't want to be on the sidelines when the recovery starts and then you're like, okay, now it's a good time to get back in because you might be getting everything exactly wrong. So the best thing to do is to really just stay invested and continue to add in dollar cost average as long as you have that long-term time horizon, right? Nobody could time the market, even though everybody will tell you how smart they are and that they got the timing right and all that stuff. Hindsight is 20-20. It's just impossible to do. So just stick to your plan. Don't do anything drastic. You will regret it in your future. And then my last tip is to just focus on you and your situation. Don't listen to people on CNBC or what your neighbor's doing or trying to chase you know, the next thing that might be good or get out of things because somebody told you that it's about to drop. You just have to focus on your personal finances and your situation. I mean, hopefully you're in a situation where you're still making a lot of money every month and your expenses are nowhere near the amount that you're bringing in. And then recession, who cares? You're not in a recession. Maybe the US is in a recession, but your personal finances, your household, you might be doing very well. So turn off the noise. Don't even listen to it, you know, and just keep on 
plugging away and doing what you're doing. If you are in that situation where you are getting hit by all of this, then you know you have to shore things up. You have to take measures. You have to make hard decisions and get your personal finances in good order. This is not a time to be going into credit card debt as interest rates are going up. Those are variable rates. So the rates on revolving debt, those are going up. You want to focus on paying those things off, not adding to them. So also look to see if you are in an emergency situation, look to see what leverage you could pull. I talk about this all the time. Where could you get money? What's the pecking order of ways that you could survive if need be? Where could you pull money from the least painful, you know, all the way to the most painful? Pad that emergency fund and just start thinking about this stuff because the economy, it might get much worse before it starts to get better. So obviously the worst thing in your personal financial economy is if you lose your job. So be prepared for that. If that were to happen, what it would look like and what options you would have at that point. But overall, just being honest, I am worried about the economy. I do think that, you know, we're heading in a very dangerous direction and I just don't know how it's all going to play out. Nobody does. So the best thing you could do is be on solid financial ground, build up that cash, you know, make sure that you could weather any kind of storm and hopefully you're going to have money left over to invest in your future. All right, everyone, I hope that you found that helpful. Reach out to me if you have any questions or you just want to talk through any of this stuff. Come join me over at the School of Personal Finance. Enroll, become a part of the community. I would love to be able to help you out over there. I will see you again soon. Take care. Thanks.